evening, good afternoon, good evening, depending on your time zone. My name is Pastor Yemi Omogboyega. It's nice being with you again. God bless you. Uh, this time around, I titled this message, Fight Until Something Happens. Fight Until Something Happens. Um, I was a member of the a mega Pentecostal church. And um, I experienced a lot of things. But the one I want to share with you now, which I want you to learn from, is the fact that many of these teachings and preachings of our GOs are materialistic, worldly teachings that can never promote your spiritual well-being. Rather, it will, they will, the sermons or the teachings will put you in suspense. And at the end of the day, when you hear all these long sermons, they will end up confusing you because they are not relevant to your life. They don't relevant, they are not relevant to your progress in life. They are not relevant even to your making heaven. If you watch it, I watched the ministration of the leader of the church, one of them recently, where he said he planned to do a crusade somewhere. And by the time he was about to go, the Lord told him not to go and to go to a particular place. And that place he went, at the end of the whole show, he was offered land, several acres of land. And today, that land has been used to house a, a university and a theological school. And at the end of the day, that school today, members of that church who are not financially buoyant cannot send their children to the school. Then the Bible college, you know, those who have been there, they have been rendering a lot of reports about what is happening there. I happen to attend the theological school, not at the site, but at the satellite town, at the satellite campus is there. I discovered that even the teachers at the college we are not being paid because during my time we had to be contributing weekly as we came for lectures to you know give to our teachers and at the same time all the books the pamphlets we used for studies were fully paid for by us and even i had to be moving from ekiti to ibada on a weekly basis till we finished that lecture at the end of the day, nothing is free in the uh, theological uh, uh, trainings that we are having. Absolutely not free. You pay through your not pay your transportation. You have to pay through. I mean, do something like supporting the teachers and all the same, because the teachers themselves were confessing to us that nothing comes to them. They are all doing the work of God. <laughs> May you not be foolish in Yehoshia's name. Now, there are so many. If you watch, one thing you need to watch out for in these our GO's messages is that it is about how they are blessed. Some of them will tell you, we have never borrowed a dime and we have 
owned everything in this world? It is true. How did they not borrow? It is because of the monies that you contribute through the various the, the products you buy for them. You buy fast food, you buy tithes, you buy love offering, you buy um, donations, you buy vows, you buy um, like one of my provincial pastor then in that church introduced another product for our province and it is called P-U-S-H pray until something happen, happens and the bill for that is your one month salary for those who are earning salaries and well those who are in businesses they will know how much they will pay and today one of the leading pastors in this very church is already reminding members that the uh, salary increase that the government has just done minimum wage the very first monies that will come to them apart from the 10 percent of the main salary itself the totality of the difference that comes from this increase should be paid to the church uh -huh. then not only that is already reminding them that come january your first month salary you need not touch anything from it must be given to the church as first fruit and then not only that you will still pay tight it is you that we know where to find the money to pay tight on that salary because you are giving the salary itself as a in a as a full package to the church so you will pay your tithes from wherever and then whatever love offering everything you need to do that day you will that that month you still need to do it so that's a sal calculated in salaries but what about those business they said even the first business that you do during the year the first money you make including your capital loop because i listen to his teaching sometimes misleading teaching sometimes that you do your not on profit alone but on the main business that everything you sell should be given to the church of god during the first month that's for those of you who are businessmen and you can see now they are boasting of various facilities they are the same church there is a time that they wanted to um, establish an hospital then they gave tickets up to all parishes minimum fifty thousand naira for you to donate and that hospital today is collecting money for services rendered to the public and does not even ex exclude members of the church you know what i mean they are collecting the money but they got the donations from you people but you are not enjoying any facility any benefit from that what am I saying? All this is boils to the fact that <laughs> your destiny is being compromised. Your destiny is being compromised. By the special grace of God, I am moving towards 70. I'm closer, very close to 70 than, um, than even uh, 65, right? I'm closer to 70 than at this age my practical experience is the fact that hey, if you don't invest in your future you will regret your life your destiny will be compromised and the destiny of your children will be compromised your the destiny of the generations after you will be compromised if you go by these foolish donations they are cajoling you you know begging you cursing you, you know, forcing you, threatening you to give to them. This is a fight that you must now take up yourself. Otherwise, you will regret your future. Hear me. Like I said, I am close to 70. Today, I know what it costs to 
medically take care of yourself. Even if you have trained your children very well. Many of us are foolish that we didn't even do that. We are given to church. If you don't take care of yourself, even if you take good care of your children, you will discover that at a stage hmm, when your medical expenses are so high that your children may not be able to bear it. And you may not be in a position to be under a pension scheme that will cover, a pension scheme that will be able enable you to cover that. Even if you are a pensioner and you're under HMO, it may get to a point that the kind of ailments that may come out of your system you will be treating may be something that will be outside the HMO's uh, power or um, scope of treatment and your children are unable to you are unable to and your hmo is unable to where you even have one at the end of the day may god help you if you don't die prematurely many deaths that are killing people today before their time is not for anything other than the fact that they don't have money to maintain their health now <clears throat> your churches, their children's children. There was one that was boasting. My children's children, my grandchildren, I have put them in best schools all over the world. I have built houses. I've done, you know, so much for them that they can never suffer again in this world. One of the GOs testified that one of his children's spiritual children boasted that he could never be poor again and that the man had over 100 houses in Lagos from the monies that you are, they are collecting from you. Hey, at the end of the day, today there are only private, um, private uh, airports, private everything. They really want to liberate themselves even from the stronghold of the government. They want to have everything free and they are buying private jets without owing a couple. All this, they are building cathedrals without owning, owing anybody. And then don't you ask yourself, how did they do it? They even deny that it is not your money that they are using to do it, which means apart from you, your money is insignificant compared to what they are getting from elsewhere. And we know that, you know, they move around jolly jolly with the politicians, jolly jolly with the uh, government officials and so on and so forth. We know that. But my concern is, I just mentioned medical alone. How about other things of life that you need to take care of for you to live and die well? If you don't invest as they are, inv if there's anything I want you to do is to copy them by investing heavily in your future. One, invest heavily on your children. Dr. Apoki was suggesting the other day, and I feel it is very sensible. Education in Nigeria today, no matter how brilliant your children are, they may not get good employment that will, commensurate, will be commensurate with their qualifications. So if you can send your children abroad, please never hesitate. You are not doing too much. May the children themselves become grateful at the end of the day. May they not be children of regret, because some children, even if you give, give them everything, they will not be grateful. Pray also that they will be merciful towards you. Then invest in businesses, real estate. I think I've advertised some real estate businesses that are going on that we market for people now. Please invest in matters like this. I recommend that you invest. If you cannot buy land from landowners because of the troubles they are in, invest in real estate through uh, estate developers, reputable estate developers, there are many of them who are advertising all over the place, but make sure you know the one you are investing into. Then invest in other businesses. Maybe you are skilled in anything that can be marketed on the net. Invest in your knowledge, in your skill, uh, man, skill pool. Make sure that there is something you can be marketing until your dying day. For instance, if you are a lawyer, you can practice that in your dying day. If it is, um, if you are an uh, architect, that can be practiced in the dying day. 
if you are a medical doctor that can be practiced until their dying day, invest in your God-given talent. Because indeed, honestly, if you ask me, this is something that can pay your pension and take good, good medical care of you. If you see for somebody like Afe Babalolana, who owns uh, whatever, uh, hospitals and uh, schools and other, will he be talking of where he will generate money from? Be like Afe Babalola, because he invested a lot. You will say that they are capitalists, say they are greedy, this and that is your problem. Stay there and be criticizing the, your church. You will say that they are manipulating like the fight we are fighting now to liberate you. You will think that they are wise. And that's where they are not giving up in their quest for the pursuit of money to the detriment of your physical and spiritual lives. So be careful. Invest. Invest in knowledge acquisition. Invest in other businesses that you can do. That's why I like, love my Igbo people. You know, be like them. Let your containers be on the high seas. You know, do the best you can, but start them all small. Do them without being greedy. You know, a little here, a little there. You will be able to cope with your old, old age with or without your children even supporting you. But the more important thing is that all the monies that you are contributing to the so-called Church of God, you have no benefit coming out of them. Nothing. Instead, even when you die and they come to bury you, they will still collect honorarium. And that will be your end. They will not remember your children. They will not remember your family. They will not remember anybody. So I plead with you, invest in your future. Ah, invest in your future. God be with us. Now, take notes, like I said. Churches are supposed to be blessings to people, but they have turned their ways back. Who, again, do you invest in? Invest on the poor, the widow, the orphan. There are some brilliant children. They are orphans. They have nobody to help them, but they have brains. Invest in their lives so that they can fulfill their destiny. Not necessarily because they are coming to bless you tomorrow. Some of them may be kind enough to come and bless you. And if they come, that is benefit. Don't do it for purpose of saying you want to benefit from them. If they come, that is God's do. But don't also take offense that <laughs> I trained so 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 they didn't remember me. Once you have invested in yourself, you have no cause to be looking towards anybody to do anything for you. So please invest in your in all these people. The book of James 1 27. Go and read it. Churches should fulfill that. Christians should fulfill that. Every human being should fulfill that. Then Matthew 22, 37 to 39, that will always cite. Love your God with the whole of your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Please do good to preach and propagate the word of God. That is Matthew 28 from about verse 10 to the end. You know, propagate. You see, that you have to propagate the gospel it doesn't mean that you have to be tied to the apron string of any denomination. Any denomination will not want you to exercise that God-given command that you should go ahead and preach other than to preach and bring them to their churches. Copy somebody like Dr. Apoki. He detached himself. Copy somebody like us. We detached ourselves from the stronghold of this uh, spiritual cabals and we are ministering to you now they don't want us to ministry online yes i do some of them will say you see there are so many ministers online this and that they didn't like the ministry the ministry online they didn't and this is what we are supposed to do anywhere you are is a is an avenue for you to propagate the, the word of god tell those who have not been born again to become born again let them know god for themselves and then don't give foolishly any money they are threatening you to give or cajoling you and saying that, you know, you must give. If you don't do it, you will die or something like will happen to you or you will not get blessed is all a lie. They will threaten you. They will boast about their wealth. They will curse you, you know, over your non-payment of tithes. It is clear now that tithing is outlawed. 
you know. My son and I were just talking about this. Ah, but we are talking of the laws being outlawed and then, but the new one, the new uh, New Testament is also a law. I say, yes, it's a law, but it's a law that is distinct from the Old Testament laws. In the laws in in Old Testament, they are for punishing, punishing whosoever violated them. But the laws in the New Testament, which is Matthew 22, 37 to 39, is about if you now commit such laws, you will ask God for forgiveness and you f depart from it and go ahead and start your life again. Nobody will want to have the authority to stone you to death as they wanted to do to that woman. I think it's in the book of John 5 or 6. Now, just find out. You know, the woman caught in adultery and she was brought to Christ and they carried their stones. And Christ told them, Who has not committed any sin? Let him first cast the first stone. And nobody could until he was free. And Christ says, I didn't, com I didn't condemn you either. Just forget about a sinful life and come to righteousness. And then that woman left you know, not killed. But the Old Testament would have stoned her. They were right to carry that stone, to want to kill her. But the new law, which is grace, which is forgiveness, which is freedom instead of bondage, which is, you know, mercy, doesn't do that. That is, you know, you see the two laws now, Old Testament law, 631 of them, New Testament, their operation, in operation, they are different. The last one is operating in the spirit of love but the old one is, is operating in the um what do you call it in law now um, that's what you call it that will serve as punishment as detriment it is operating in wickedness it is it does not have mercy now you have mercy now you have grace now you have forgiveness so what else do you want please brethren do not let your life and your family's life be um compromised invest in your parents because you shall become parents especially those of you who are young if you want your children to invest in you invest in your parents invest in your community when they are looking for somebody of substance tomorrow you'll be amongst them okay every town every community now is doing what you call an annual so 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 community day it is for you to come and join hands to develop that place. It doesn't have to be big. The little you can do. If you can't do it immediately, pledge. But once you make a pledge, no matter how long it is, make sure you pay it. It is part of your own contribution to the advancement of your community. May God Almighty bless. I hope from now on you will not be, uh, your destiny will not be truncated anymore. God bless you. I'm your friend. The truth has to be told. We must fight now until something happens. The religious exploitation, the religious manipulation, the religious cajoling, the religious lies must give way to the truth that Christ taught us. They have, they have, in fact, they can't, but they, are, they have done everything to taint Christianity because of the greed they have for gains. Don't be among the foolish ones. God bless you.